In this video, we're going to be covering dental burrs classifications. There are five ways to classify dental burrs. The first way would be according to the dental materials. Another way would be based on the type of shank or this portion right over here that's labeled number two, the shank of the burr. Another way would be the shape of the burr. That's number three. That's right over here. This is the shape of the burr, and we'll go over it in a moment. The grid size, whether there is thicker grid or smaller grid, and the size of the head diameter, whether it's small or large. Now let's take a quicker look. Again, how to classify it. There are five ways, and here's the website, and here's a website where you can find out more information about burst classifications. So the uh, burrs could be classified by the type of the material. It could be a diamond material or a carbide, which we'll co cover in a moment. By the shank, the shank could be smooth or it could have a little um, point where it locks in at the end. By shapes, there could be a football shape, um, a ball shape, other shapes, which we'll cover in a moment. By the grid size, whether the grid of the burr is wide, thick, or it's fine. Um, this is just a breakdown, which we'll cover deeper in a moment. And this is the website where you can find this information. And then lastly, by the head diameter, whether it's small or large. Now, if we look carefully on part one, the first classification by the materials, you could either have the burrs be made out of carbide, tungsten carbide burrs, and this material is becoming the replacement of older steel burrs, that's what they used to be. Tungsten carbide have three times the rigidity of steel, um, and they outstand wear resistance much better, and they're very durable. And the other type of material that could it be is diamonds, and diamonds is the heart hardest natural material known to man and therefore the material of choice when it comes to uh, wearing down the hardest tissue in the human body which is tooth enamel or the outer layer of teeth. Now diamond birds have a steel shank um, and that part, the active part, could be coated with either natural or synthetic diamonds powder. So right over here you see with the microscope the diamond pa is powdered onto this shank uh, the, the, the head of the burr um, and usually now only synthetic diamonds are used they're much more available and the uh, natural ones are less available natural ones would be used when regular diamonds are, are going from rough to uh, proper form any dust particles that are remaining companies could use and put diamonds onto their burrs but it doesn't matter either way the final result is the same and the cost, obviously, for natural diamond burrs would be much higher than synthetic. Now, the next part, the next classification is according to their shank. Now, the shank could be either smooth, um, and that's this part would be at, only grabbed onto, so based on friction. So it's called the friction grip. That's what FG stands for. And then FGL would be friction grip long. And then FGM would be friction grip mini. That's what the letters are over here. So we got friction grip mini, friction grip, and friction grip long. And as you can see, the mini is short. It would be here. The regular would be friction grip here. And the long one would be extended. The other type of burr, uh, classification is based on a contra angle and this contra angle dental burr the diameter is around 2.35 millimeters that's not that important but it's used for right angle uh, hand pieces and low speed hand pieces which we're going to show you in a second and the last classification would be burrs for the head hand piece and they're pretty long now what does all that mean well take a hand piece this is a dental drill we call it handpiece because it goes into the hand and this this is a high speed handpiece and this burr without anything on it would be used for this handpiece and that burr 
is for turbine hand pieces. Turbine means in here in this little piece of the hand piece, you you have a motor. That motor is called a turbine, and as it spins, it actually spins really fast and right over here we have the friction grips different sizes of them and it holds on to grabbing onto it friction basically based on resistance of it coming out when you put into the burr into the hand piece um, now the other type of hand pieces are either straight nose cone or contra angle hand piece now contra angled uh, or angled nose cones uh, this is the angle nose cone adds on with a latch contra angle and latch simply means um, right over here we're just going to skip the middle part for a second latch means this piece of the burr gets latched into this opening that's there that's how it holds the burr so this burr is designed for contra angle hand pieces as you can see friction grip is based on friction and contra angle is based on the latch latching on into the hand piece the last hand piece is a nose cone or straight hand piece and that one also works on friction grip but these burrs are very long and both of these connect to a motor unlike here there's a turbine these have a motor that connects into it and this one has a motor this motor is inside in here also but this one moves really fast these move slower now if you look at it here's another example of a contra angle hand piece it just this one has more friction to grab onto the hand this one has no friction it just got nice comfort pieces and your fingers wrap around here now the next classification is based on shapes there could be ball shapes cylinder shapes inverted flame um, this all is just explanations of how they look but it'd be easier if you guys saw the shapes and I wish this was taught everywhere um, it'd be much easier to understand now if you look at this this spur head looks like a ball so it'd be a the name of this burr would be a ball end or round end this looks like a spear this one looks like a flame so this would be a flame one this looks like a pear so this looks like a pear um, so it's called the per, pear hand piece. This is a cylinder, cylinder hand, uh, burr. Um, this is a pear burr. This is a wheel burr. This is um, a veneers wheel burr. There's three of them. This is a double cone. This is a cone. This is a football burr. Now, all of these, um, there's different ways to refer to them, but as long as you can remember the shape of the burr, and you could always go to this website and view all the burrs that they have or go to any website on Google to find out what the burrs are and that's basically the next classification was the shapes of the dental burrs then the next would be the grid size so the grid size classification um, and by the way all these classifications are called ISO regulatory that's that's the way the classifications were made and these grid sizes are color coordinated now to make it easier to understand it let's go look at a picture here's a picture showing you that the white the yellow the red the blue the green the black and the double black the, all they mean is the type of diamond size that was attached to it now if you look at it this one has a double ring so it's a double super course this is black is super course and you can take a picture of this try to memorize it um, and these colors are standard to dentistry um, and we'll cover in other videos other stuff that have the same exact pattern in which they go but green would be coarse blue would be medium then uh, red would be fine yellow would be extra fine and you could see how the pictures show the grids getting smaller and then super fine would be white and these diamond grids are very tiny these are medium size these are more bigger now the diamond grid size is right over here you could see that it would start from fine it would be 10 to 20 and the extra fine would range from 20 to 30 and the fine would be 30 to 50 medium is about 107 to 120 coarse is 150 to 180 super coarse is 180 to 250 and the double super coarse could be double that or even higher than 250 that's the um, grid 
sizes. Now, if you look at the next classification of dental burrs, it would be the head or the size of the burr. Now, we're not going to go into detail, and this is just for you to read. You could pause the video, but this is how the sizes work. Sizes range from small and higher and higher and here's an example of a small one and it increases in millimeters now what's the int interesting part is when you do get a burr catalog they usually label it as double zero seven so it's double oh seven double oh eight double oh nine and all it means is since it's a one tenth all you have to do is just imagine there was a decimal point that move it one two over and it would be 0 0.5 millimeters so double uh zero seven is a point seven millimeter size right over here and uh zero ten would be one point zero and one point four would be zero fourteen all you do is just move the decimal point over and here's another example of different sizes and as you can see um 168 friction grip 168 friction grip 169 friction grip 170 um all of these are different ones and as you can see the sizes go up now that we covered it we could again take a quick look at the bird that we had in the beginning of the lecture and you could see of the presentation that right over here we see the size size is number five and the size says zero one fourteen and what does that mean you move the decimal over one two it's a one point four millimeter size so right over here zero one fourteen is one point four millimeter size so based on this we end our presentation and we'll do a quick review so you guys understand and when we said what it means is um, the first thing is to look at the material either it's a diamond burr or carbide burr then you'd look on the shank and overall length of what what hand piece it would be used for then the shapes there's different shapes you could spend some time learning them the grid sizes from um, very fine to super coarse and then the head size of the diameter remember you just move the decimal point from two over so 014 would be a 1.4 millimeter size thank you